Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this presentation uh, from St. Leo University regarding higher education in a post-COVID world with Wacom. Uh, my name is Gideon Schnog, and I am the Director of Client Technology Services for St. Leo uh, in our Department of Information Technology. Some of you may have not heard of St. Leo University before, but it's a small university uh, located in St. Leo, Florida, just north of Tampa, Florida. And here's a little picture of our beautiful campus. Uh, in a nutshell, our university has about 12 to 14,000 students with about 16 locations uh, throughout the country. Uh, we have over 800 instructors and about 1,600 adjunct professors. And we specialized pre-COVID in teaching um, via what we call VTT, which is called, which is video teaching teleconferencing. And uh, this existed because we worked with the, uh, the military a lot, especially the Navy, with campuses throughout the United States, and we connected those campuses via video conferencing. So students could uh, receive lectures from one instructor, for example, in um, Georgia, uh, or an instructor in Florida, and we can broadcast that live with active student participation throughout the United States. So you could say that uh, we were in the video conferencing game quite heavily before COVID, uh, but now due to COVID, we've definitely escalated that significantly. So in terms of items that we'll run through and hopefully you'll learn or maybe build questions on, I'm going to address how St. Leo University delivers this in-person and remote education uh, given the hardware tools and applications that we have in our environment. Uh, also, we'll look at how COVID has driven St. Leo's IT infrastructure to change. Uh, obviously, we had to adapt very quickly, just like every other university and business had to uh, globally. Um, why utilizing technology for student engagement is a priority because it's just again sitting in front of a camera which ironically is what we're doing now isn't the only thing that you can do to have a successful class you need to engage all the students and faculty and then lastly how it is helping educators deliver those lessons again it's just not a canned lesson of sitting in front of a camera and teaching students because we know how it is retaining the attention of anybody these days is very difficult so pre-COVID even happening, the, the education environment already had a lot of challenges. Um, There's a lot of competition, many universities, both internationally and domestic. So we always have to see how we can expand our teaching boundaries. So geographically, you don't want to be beholden to where you exist, like our main campus. Um, that's why we had centers all over the country and also had have online components to our teaching and education. We also want to make sure that we're maintaining a efficient and effective teaching environment uh, that is how well that it functions with the way students, uh, both young and old and faculty, exist with technology in their daily life. You know, our cell phones, which of course I shouldn't have this on me at this time because I had a focus, our cell phones predominate our life. Everything we do, you know, whether it's at home, at work, or um, out and about. We have our phones in our hands. So we wanted to make sure that those BYOD devices could easily easily be accepted in our environment, uh, including laptops or, or any external components. And touch being a very important part of this because everything today is touch, albeit with COVID, we're trying not to touch anything. Um, but realistically, we can't just live in isolation in the COVID environment, we have to look to the future. Uh, student engagement and retention is very key. Just because we have students in our university doesn't mean they will stay with our university. So they, we must create a good value argument and a very um, adaptive and engaging learning environment to make students want to stay with us and really have our university experience. We also want to make sure our training systems are simpler. We want them to be intuitive. We want faculty and staff to walk into a room uh, and be like, oh, this, I just got to press one button and everything just works. Uh, just like anyone's home environment, anything they buy from local retailers, they buy it because they want it to just work right away. And if it doesn't work, what do they do? 
they bring it right back to the store. And that's not what we want for our university. Same goes for students. Students are presenting all the time in their classes, team meetings. They need to be able to engage the student, uh, their fellow students, just the way a faculty member does. We wanna make sure that we meet all ADA needs. We wanna make sure that anyone that has a special need is able to access our hardware with simple training and um, make sure that it's available for them wherever they are teaching uh, or using the systems from. We also wanna make sure we maintain our end of life timeline, so EOL. Uh, we want to make sure our investment goes far. We try to do a five to seven year horizon for our equipment, which has become a little bit easier now that everything has shifted from the analog to digital age. So that's kind of all done for now. And then we also want to make sure that IT provides the tools and support uh, for academics uh, to teach effectively. Remember, IT is just the tool. We say we have this great resource for you, and then it's up to our academic body to take that to the next level. Now. Those were the challenges that existed pre-COVID. Now COVID has thrown a complete wrench into it. It's not going to last forever, obviously, but I, clearly the way education is taught uh, both in um, pre-K through 12 and higher education is forever changed at this point. Um, the way we started with the shift with COVID once things really started to shut down back in March of 2020 we were scrambling to get all the resources we needed to make sure classes could happen in the fall semester for us, which would be in August. Student and faculty expectations weren't too high, except for, well, I'd like to be able to sit in class or sit at home and, and get the education I needed. But that leniency is kind of gone. So whereas it was acceptable that maybe a room had a webcam and just had a small speaker so that we could get through this fall semester, that leniency and understanding is now going to shift to performance. Students are going to request and require, and faculty as well, that the technology in the rooms meets their expectations and needs. And it's not just a webcam. And that's a big challenge uh, because during this blurred modality of having students sitting in class and students sitting online, how do you increase the technology in so many spaces when our budget is actually on a decline? Most universities are suffering enrollment issues. Uh, they are having students that are just either not showing up for the first semester or deciding to hold off until COVID is over and then continue with their education or just going into a full online modality. And this is a challenge because how do you spend more while getting re less revenue? So that means we need to be efficient, very, very efficient. Uh, and you know, there's no way to explain this to a student to say, well, we can't spend on you, but please continue to come to our school. That is not an argument that we can justify. We must invest in the future post COVID world. So another question too becomes, how do you teach effectively while remote? So students, most of our classes, although we had many online and hybrid, were all physical in person. This is the same for the majority of universities. So how do you make sure that the students still feel like they're getting that proper engaged feeling? And that's where Wacom actually comes in to fill in that solution quite well. Uh, I mentioned about the increasing cost and declining revenues. And we also had supply chain issues. We couldn't get some of the assets we needed. Many people are suffering from not being able to get cameras, microphones, and things like that. Fortunately, we did plan ahead. We saw this coming. We did do a big buy of camera systems to get us started in our hybrid environment. Um, so we were poised well, but now we still have to adapt to the future. Uh, so this is just a quick chart that kind of showed what plan we were on. So we were, let me get my little annotation piece out here. So we were looking at uh, having um, a change in our model. This green line represented our old video conferencing infrastructure, which as we took those old investments out of the environment, our costs would be dropping. And then the orange line represents the increase in investment of new systems, such as our Wacom tablets and our Zoom video conferencing environments. What COVID has now done though is expedited this quite quickly. So this is a five-year time horizon. We've now jumped our investment period up significantly. I'm sorry, well, we've decreased our investment period 
So now what was a five-year plan becomes a two or three-year plan, and we've had to increase the spend to catch up in all our rooms. Again, a tall order to ask for while revenue is declining, but it is achievable because we already kind of saw this coming. So how does technology play in this world? How can it rescue universities across the board? Well, video conferencing obviously is key. Uh, we have adopted an enterprise Zoom license for our university where every faculty member, staff member, and student has a Zoom license. Uh, this includes webinars that we uh, host many, many meetings with, and we do live streaming all the time, Facebook, um, YouTube, pretty much all the modalities that are available out there, because this is how we have to reach our customers, um, which is which are our students. Um, we quickly adapted over 120 rooms that were only in-person classes to this hybrid environment. That means having a camera, microphone, uh, and speaker system all in one, as well as some of the rooms we were able to add the DTH 2452 Waka monitors those are the large 24 inch displays with uh, annotation and Intuos devices from Wacom, which are just the small non-screen based tablets for annotation. Very, very important for our physics classes, chem classes, mathematics, uh, art, you know, any of these classes that require that in-class participation part. Uh, new classrooms no longer have whiteboards. So that's pretty much out the door uh, because if you do use a whiteboard, those students who are online no longer have the ability to participate in your content. So just in case to not risk an instructor using whiteboards, we've just done away with any large whiteboards altogether for new rooms. We wanna make sure that our audience is engaged and through Zoom and Wacom, they can actually participate in whiteboarding sessions and you know annotate together. Uh, we also want to make sure that in our classes, users have kind of like a smartphone style experience. So that's one thing that we really like about the DTH uh, 2452, that it's touch with your finger and with pen. Uh, so it's a glorified phone, a really, really big phone. But everyone just intuitively comes and starts touching the screen, and they don't even use the keyboard and mouse at some point. Uh, I know I don't. When I go into the rooms, I just start working on those screens right away, and that's a very useful tool. Um, so whiteboarding and computing annotation, I already hit on that. Um, I mean, this is with any tool, whether you're using Zoom, Teams, Google Hangouts, everyone has this software capability. For us, one of the things we do like about Wacom, which is a differentiator from some of the other products we've used in the past, is their lack of proprietary software. Now an instructor comes into the room and that monitor is just an extension of their mouse and keyboard. So we promote the use of tools that they already know. Uh, annotation software, uh, such as uh, OneNote, um, doing inking in PowerPoint, Word. Uh, I mean, these are tools that all instructors are familiar with. So we wanna make sure that um, there's no relearning of these tools. We don't wanna have to train people on that. Uh, ADA compliance, you know, that's something that we mentioned before. We have all our walk-up monitors on arms so that they can be brought down to the side of a podium as needed, and then uh, it will make it more uh, easy for uh, someone that has an ADA need to use them. We also like the robust reliability of the monitors. Uh, we've had no failures while deployed on uh, in any of our classrooms, but if a failure were to happen, which obviously this can happen over time, it's easy to swap things out. So rather than having a large 50 inch or 70 inch touch display in front of a room, which is extremely heavy and requires additional infrastructure, it's easy for us to go and bring in another 24 inch monitor, put it on our Ergotron arm, and we're back in business because downtime is a big deal. We cannot afford downtime. So this is an example here of uh, one of our typical desk designs. So this is a design that we created with uh, Marshall. And uh, this is an example of one of those uh, Ergotron style arms. This is a site that we just completed actually at our uh, historic cigar factory in downtown Tampa. You can see the Walker monitor on an Ergotron arm here as well. And it's an 85 inch uh, Sony display on the wall. This here is from our uh, Charleston, South Carolina project uh, and center. We have uh, six classrooms up there and they all have the same layout and design with the Wacom monitor. 
And then this was actually our pilot room, uh, the first room ever that we did with a full Zoom design and the use of uh, the Wacom 24-inch tablets. And this set the uh, set the tone or the bar, if you will, for all our future our future installations. And then this was just an example of what um, the rooms look like. You saw the one image of the 85 in the front. Most of our rooms, we actually strive to do dual monitors now. Again, we're hearkening back to the engagement piece because when students are just sitting in front of content in a classroom or seeing content at home, it's not engaging. Uh, they, they're not engaging with their fellow students in other centers or even at home. So one monitor actually shows the content from the instructor and another monitor shows the students in the other sites. So now I can know, oh yeah, that's my partner, John, who's in my group and you know I have a presentation with him next week. And then I can actually engage with him during a class. We have cameras both in the front and rear of our classroom. So depending on whether the classroom is a receiving location or a teaching location, um, the instructor can choose what camera to show. So the key takeaways are, you know, stick with what you what people know. You know, we know cell phones, we know touch technology. Um, you know, things change and adapt so fast these days. It's all about now, now, now. It's about Amazon two-day shipping. It's about Google searches. It's about streaming videos. So you want to make sure that uh, there's a very, very quick learning curve for any tools that we put in space, or else no one will adopt it. Uh, if they don't have ease of access to the tool, it's just not going to work. And that's why we promote, you know, Microsoft Office Suite for a lot of the, the, the teaching environments and why we have easy training sessions for Zoom. We want to focus on uh, less of the form and more on the function. We want to make sure that it looks good, but it really needs to work good. Universities can't standardize on just form. And we want to work on being equipment agnostic. We want to make sure that with the changing times, we can be flexible to say, well, because everything we're doing now is USB based, because everything is a touch monitor that doesn't have proprietary software, we can switch gears at any moment. And that allows us to reduce our cost and again, be more flexible for the future. And we want to adopt technology that is more efficient and therefore less costly. So again, hearkening back to the same, to the same uh, situation that I was alluding to. So in a nutshell, you know, we believe that uh, the use of Zoom and Wacom represent a good value add for St. Leon University, uh, and it's a good part of our technology tool chest. For all our investments coming up in the near future, it is going to be a very important part of our standardization as we try to um, work and be more competitive in the education environment. And most importantly, make sure that we are giving students and faculty what they need to set themselves up for a quality education and make sure that they're ready for the post-COVID world. Because at some point, the craziness will end, uh, things will get back to normal, um, but at least we know that whatever that normal is, we have all the tools available to adapt to any teaching environment. And if something else crazy happens, uh, which hopefully it does not, we will still be able to switch gears to fully online, hybrid, or fully in-person at any moment. Uh, so that pretty much summarizes my presentation. I hope it addressed most of the speaking topics. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to jump into them.